push you to, um, or else you you, know, you can you can you can leave. Okay, you can leave and take your wife to another house. Maybe she will be happy with that. But I mean, would you be happy? Uh, would your parents be happy? So these are. It's not only about rights and rights and rights and rights and rights. It's also about uh, emotions and a lot of things involved. So, um, like I said, there isn't a kind of textbook answer. Um, you will have to find your own way. And um, if you want, then I can can give you um, have a happy married life. Um, do you know why I put that picture there for? Can somebody tell me why I put that picture there for? What's it got to do with married life? Is married life not to do with you? Yeah, kind of. But I wasn't that deep before. <laughs> now you said it, because I'll take it. I just put it there for the sake of it, <laughs> right? No, I was trying to say that married life is an optical illusion, you know, and, and it's, it's the way that you kind of negotiate. It's not. It's not everything is not always beautiful. Um, it's not always that everything's laughing at you. Um, it's not always happily ever after. It is an optical illusion, and, and, and you try to work work things out in your head first and understand each other. And, um, and these 20 rules for happy marriage is by um, Sister Ruqayya Walis Maksud. Um, so you can read them. Um, and then I've got a piece of poetry by Khalil Gibran, taken from his um, book called The Prophet. And basically the gist of it is he's trying to say that, you know, give each other space. You know. um, and, and then at the end, I've got a um, reading list on page 12. This reading list is not exhaustive. It's some of those books that which I found really, really practical. I mean, there are so many books like Ashraf's Marriage Guide and so many books that you can <coughs> find. But these are something which I found really like. Uh, Shimoli Botich, uh, this book uh, is called Cautious Sex, a Recipe for Passion and Intimacy. This person, Shimoli Botich, is a rabbi. Okay, So it's, it's actually written from a Jewish perspective. But it's a really, really good book because being a Jewish rabbi is very clean and it gives a lot of practical advice, you know, so which Muslims, as Muslims, we can take it. And then this, we've got Gary Chapman, The Five uh, Love Languages. Um, Imam Ghazali's, uh, um, Imam Ghazali's The Proper Conduct of Marriage in Islam, Adab al-Nikah, Book 12 of Ihya Ulamuddin, translated by Sheikh Muhtar Holland, Rahimahullah, is a very good book. Ruqayya Waris Maqsood's Muslim Marriage Guide, and then Ajman Masroor just recently released a book, which is okay, 10 things that you should know about marriage. And then there's, there's the website of Five Love Languages, it's an online test that you can take. And I, I put a lot of stuff, I mean, I didn't want to I didn't want to um, give you this, but some of my students kind of forced me to do this. I, I put a lot of stuff on Twitter and, and, and Facebook, so if you want to follow me, um, I mean, everything that I think, um, I think Junaid's been, been putting the whole lecture or sound bites from the lecture on Twitter today, so he's been kind of tweeting, uh, you know, whilst we're at it. I think the sister had a question. Beauty matters in a marriage. What should these girls do who are ordinary looking? Are you not so beautiful? This may become the cause of them not getting married or in, or in arranged marriage. I mean, the thing is that we need to we need to see beyond that. Uh, first of all, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, so what's beautiful to you might be ugly to somebody else. Okay, so there is somebody somewhere which will who will um, kind of be appealing to this girl. Um, secondly, you have to understand that it's the other way around as well. You know, not all men are kind of Tom Cruise or something like that. You know, um, there are some men who are not very handsome. So um, it's 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 it's. But I think people, where well, beauty is a thing where we should look for. But I think sometimes we need to also look beyond that, especially if we know the family of this girl or the family of this of this uh, of this boy, and we know that they come from a pious family. Then maybe. And because at the end of the day, these wrinkles, they come. You know, Sheikh Rumi, Jalaluddin al-Rumi, basically mentions an anecdote in his Matnawi where he says that um, there was a Sheikh, and the Sheikh had a um, really beautiful um, girl who was serving him. And one of the murids, one of the disciples of the Sheikh, one day fell in love with this, you know, um, girl. And um, so he wasn't able to do dhikr, okay? He wasn't able to do dhikr, so what he did was uh, that woman basically she went to she went to the sheikh and said, look, you know this guy he's fallen in love with me, um, sort him out. He's a murid. So basically the sheikh gave her some laxatives, and he said, take these laxatives and whatever comes out the feces when you defecate, collect them in a bowl. <laughs> collect them in a bowl, right, or a, or, or a bucket. And this is Sheikh Rumi is mentioning this, 
and, and, and bring them to me. So one day, um, after about two weeks or something, this woman out of kind of continuously taking laxative, she's you know, dehydrated and she's become like a stick. And then she went in front of this, um, this murid and this guy said, what on earth happened to you? <laughs> right? So she basically bought those two buckets of feces and she said, look, you know, this is my beauty. It's, it's all gone in those two buckets of feces. Um, this is the real me. And, and then he kind of understood the reality and then they did Tawbah together. And, and you know, and, and then, you know, something else happened. I mean, they didn't get married. But, so beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, so sisters shouldn't be too vain and shouldn't think, I mean, I, I hope I didn't give the expression or impression here that you have to be somewhat wow. You know, uh, again, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So, and, and ordinary women do get married. Ordinary women, uh, men do get married. So it shouldn't be a cause of concern. As far as in arranged marriage, if the husband does not like the look of his wife and openly says so as well, then maybe um, maybe they need to come to more fickle marriage classes and, 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 and take these classes. But also somebody who is already there, um, maybe the wife can counsel him, comfort him, or I don't know, you should find a way of conflict resolution, make him feel really bad that look, you know, you, you're talking about me, well look at yourself, right? So I don't know, this is something that you need to find out, but I think one of the reasons why we have this, these fiqh of marriage courses is not only to, I mean, you'll notice that a lot of this stuff wasn't fiqh. A lot of this, I mean, I could have gone into ijab and qabul and about different mahas and when, what kind of stipulations you need. I could have gone very technical fiqh. A lot of it is not really fiqh. A lot of it is just kind of conflict resolution and how to make uh, a, a marriage well. So, you know, a sister will have to find her way. And, and, and sometimes it's good when you talk to people. If you have friends or, you know, colleagues, maybe you should, don't go around telling everybody about your problems, but if you've got somebody who's really uh, close to you, then uh, talking to people is, is it kind of helps a lot. And if you can't do that, then you should get professional advice. Okay. Is there any questions? Is there any questions from the brothers? Is there any questions from the sisters? We said we're going to finish at 7.30, 7.32. So, um, now. If we don't have any questions from the sisters, we'll wrap it up. The sister is asking, is complaining, moaning, uploading to the husband about in-laws classed as ghibat? If yes, then how can you work around it where you can upload your issues with in-laws to your husband without being ghibat? No, it doesn't, it doesn't come, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, there is a whole body of literature what comes as ghibat, what, com, what doesn't come, come as ghibat. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal used to say to um, Yahya ibn Ma'in, ta'al, naghtabu sa'atin fi sabilillah. Come and let's go and do ghibat in the path of Allah for us for, for, for uh, um, an hour. And what they meant by ghibat is, come on, let's go and look at these hadith scholars and say, this guy's weak and this guy's da'if and this guy's mawdu. So you have to, everything which you say bad about people um, do not come into, uh, uh, under ghibat. <coughs> this very, very famous hadith of hadith, um, uh, of hadith Umm Zara, uh, the 12 women, I mean, I don't have the hadith with me, it's very long. Uh, and, and this hadith also, um, not only looks at issues uh, of the Arab society and women at that time, but also it's a hadith which is very, very poetic in its, in, in its, uh, in its words. And in this hadith, these women, what, what are they doing? They're sitting down and they're offloading. And the Prophet wasallam actually praises these women, or actually praises one of the women who's called Umm Zara. And he says to say that Aisha, that I am like you the way Abu Zara was to Umm Zara. The only difference between me and you is that um, Abu Zara divorced Umm Zara, but I will not divorce you. So these women, they actually sat down and they were kind of talking, uploading, you know, Zawji ayaya aw ghayaya, Zawji iza dakhala asida wa iza kharaja fahida wa la yasul amma ahida, Zawji Zawji masuhu masul arnab wa rihu wa rihu zarnab. So they, these 12 women, they were actually sitting down and they were offloading. Okay, so, but the thing is that you shouldn't go out of proportion. When you know that you're offloading, 
Um, you, first of all, at the end of the day, you'll understand that you know this is your husband's mother, 